Schilling, I want to know this. When you went up to the White House with Elvis to meet President Nixon, did you guys ask President Nixon for his autograph? And can you tell us the story about going to the White House with Elvis? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a long story because... Give uh, us a Reader Digest version. I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version. All right. I'm in a bad sleep one night, Friday night, Elvis calls me in the middle of the night and said, I need you to meet me at the airport. And I said, well, put one of the guys on the phone. It was the only time he was traveling by himself. So uh, I met him at the airport. I wasn't working for him at this time. And uh, he was coming to Los Angeles. Uh, we spent the weekend in L.A., just the two of us. Pretty special time. Uh, and then I had to be at work Monday morning. I was a film editor at Paramount. And Elvis said, I need you to go back to Washington with me. And um, I told him I couldn't, and uh, through a long, he's very hard to say no to. I wound up flying all night to Washington, D.C., and uh, uh, we got there early in the morning. Elvis wrote the president a letter on the plane, and uh, he's telling the president of the United States that he's under an assumed name at a hotel, and that, you know, the president can talk, contact his uh, PR man, Jerry Schilling. So, uh, the next morning, uh, Elvis leaves to go to a meeting and, uh, at, at the Federal Narcotics Bureau. It's really a, a more technical name, I can't remember right now. And he leaves me at the hotel to wait for uh, the call from the White House. Well, I, I've been reading these Howard Hughes books where uh, he would leave one of his guys at the hotel for like a year. <laughs> so, so man, I started checking out the menus and everything. Uh, and sure enough, in about 30 minutes, I got a call from uh, Bud Eagle Crow at the White House saying that uh, the president had read Mr. Presley's letter and would like to see him in 20 minutes. Uh, which was quite unusual at the time because nobody was seeing the president at the time. The senators are nobody. Watergate was going on, but the public didn't know it. So anyway, uh, Elvis being the type of friend he is, I called him up at uh, John Finlander's office and uh, said that the president wanted to see him in 20 minutes. And he said, uh, stand out in front of the hotel, I'll be by to pick you up. So, you know, if it would have been me, I'd probably gone straight to the White House. Uh, Sonny came up to meet us at that time, so both of us went and uh, uh, they, they briefed us at the executive offices, and then they told us that only Elvis could go, and they took Elvis to the White House, and we're, we're sitting with the White House aide, Sonny and I, and said, well, you know, Elvis is pretty hard to say no to, and they said, well, it's not even up to the president. It has to do with Secret Service, how many people are there, and the phone rings, and uh, it was one of the aides saying, Mr. Presley wants to meet uh, Elvis's friends. And they said of all the people that came to the White House, nobody ever went back and brought their friend, their mother, or whoever. And they were really impressed with that. And um, by the time we got to the front door of the White House, I mean of the Oval Room, um, Elvis was at home. I mean, I thought I was at Graceland. Uh, he came to the door to greet me and Sonny, and, uh, I was at awe because there was this big oval office and at the end the president was signing something and I was just kind of frozen and Elvis pushed me in and said, oh, don't be scared. And uh, you know, we, we just kind of talked around. Uh, the president gave Sonny and I some cufflinks and, uh, and Elvis said, well, you know, they got wives and Elvis was searching around the drawer. And, um, and President Nixon was trying to be one of the guys, one of the guys, and he just me on the shoulder like that. And says, hey, Elvis, you got some big guys here. And that was about how it was. Did you get the president's autograph? No. Never, but you you're never even thought of it. But you're, he said the pictures, you've seen the pictures. You're all the pictures uh, of that event. Jerry Schilling, how about it? Now, we haven't heard from DJ or Ms. Cox yet. Ms. Cox, when Elvis gave you the car that day, tell us a story about, wasn't he in the hospital or something? Yeah, he had just come back and um, he called me and he was on the way to the hospital. So I met him over there that night and the first thing he said was, I have a car coming for you tomorrow. And I said, well, thanks, but I don't need it. 
and he was a little surprised, and I said, I have one, I can't drive but one. So he said, well, hell, I don't care what you do with it, it's going to be here tomorrow, so if you do anything, want you, you damn well please with it. <laughs> so the next day, I was making his bed, and he came into the bedroom, and he called me to come over to the sitting room, and I went over, and he was leaning out the window, or looking out the window, and he dangled these car keys. And he said, there's your car down there. And I went, Whoosh. <laughs> And I, 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 mean, I was out of there like a scalded dog. And, and uh, so I went down and uh, drove the car to the parking lot. And he was watching me from the window and I drove over the curb and I looked up and he's going like this. And uh, so later on that day, he said, uh, the next time I give you a car, remind me to check first and make sure you have finished making my bed. And I said, oh, I was making your bed, wasn't I? And I said, who finished it? And he said, I did. So that was, that was the, actually the second or third gift he ever gave. It was neat. All right, thank you, Ms. Scott. We have a question out there.